How's it going, everybody? It's Pilot Flame, and we are back with another FPL live stream. And it is 59 minutes before the FPL deadline. Um, and we use the headset first thing in the morning because we don't want to wake anyone up um, in the household. So, we have a lot to discuss today. We're going to be updating our watch list because we didn't do that, I don't believe, uh, for our uh, game week preview. We're going to see at my transfers uh, that I've already made, and we will be taking your questions in the chat as per normal. Um, so, yeah, just before we do that, let's talk about Fantasy Football Scout. So, we have fantasy football scout they don't have the 20 percent off at the moment but it is a fantastic offer you can get access to optus stats you can customize the tables to your liking there's plenty of different tools there as well um, it's a fantastic tool i use it and um, i'm proud to be an affiliate partner with them this season so make sure to use the link in the about section to get hands on your fantasy football scout membership it also has heat maps as well which i actually have been using to make my decision for one of my transfers as well so yeah it's a it's a fantastic fantastic tool um, and uh, it's great it's great um, and I think you should use it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's see what transfers are made. And just before we get started, uh, while we're offline, D Vipers, uh, Tech Hop UK, Harrock Man, and ZQR Concept. Thank you for the follows. I think we are all caught up to date. Um, Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Love the intro. Uh, that song was pretty good too, but we got the, the soundboard going on and Renato approves as well. So, um, Top five defender options on the wild card. Um, well, I think Trent's number one. I would definitely say Trent's number one. You, you can't get rid of Trent. Um, number two, I think, is Luke Shaw. I don't think you can get rid of him either. Number three. Number three. I'm just looking at the, the fixtures off to the side here as well. Um, I would say number three would probably be a Chelsea defender of some kind. If Reese James was available, I would say Reese James. But I think... Um, I think you go with the likes of Antonio Rudiger or Christensen, probably. Number four would probably be probably Luca Digne, I would say. And he would be in a similar price bracket to a Chelsea defender. So if you didn't get a Chelsea defender, you could swap from Digne to a Chelsea defender later on. Um, and then probably Cody or Semedo. One of those two, I would say. Yeah, that's what I'll go with. So Trent first, Shaw second, Cody. Uh, Christensen or, or Rudiger third. It would be Reese James if he wasn't suspended. Luca Digne fourth, and then um, a Wolves defender fifth. Number five could be Ben White or Tierney. Yeah, if, if I knew Tierney was playing every week, then yeah, maybe. But he's too injury prone. Um, but um, yeah, Cody and Semedo as well. I just don't think Marcel long term is actually going to stay in the team. Um, so that's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, we have made the FPL transfers for this week. So as you can see up in the corner, um, which way is it? That way, up that way, up the very top corner, you see three out of two, which basically means I used my two free transfers and then I took a minus four. Um, and, uh, yeah, the transfers that we made were, we brought in, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, as you can see here. We brought in uh, Ishmael Asar for his little bit of fixtures in these four, which I think are great. Um, and we brought in Mason Mount. Uh, and that was for um, Harvey Barnes, who they might be changing the system, which means he leaves the team 
in terms of like he doesn't play over the likes of Ian Acho or something like that. At least I would hope Brandon Rogers would see that. Mason Mounts come in for the likes of Hyunmin Son, who is possibly injured, and Ronaldo's come in for Wilson, who is injured as well. Um, would I have liked the likes of Jota? Yes. So the players that really that could affect my rank this week is Jota, it's Salah, and it's DCL, I think. Um, the Wolves players and Torres will be lower owned, so I don't think they're going to be as uh, effective. You know, if they score and do well, then obviously they'll they'll hurt me. But um, yeah, what is Ronaldo's ownership actually? 26.6%. He's going up and up and up and up every day. Ben Gamble says thoughts. Okay, let's check out the team. So we got Sanchez, Antonio Rudiger, Shaw, uh, Digne, Jota. Uh, Traore, Salah, Torres, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Antonio, and Ronaldo. So basically what you've done is you've sacrificed Trent so that you could get Calvert-Lewin, Antonio, Ronaldo, Salah, and a beefy, like a beefier midfield with a really, like a, a solid defense. I would like to see Trent in that team. It depends on what your bench looks like. What does your bench look like, Ben? Because if your bench is okay as well, then basically what you're kind of doing is saying Trent versus DCL in a sense. Um, I would be curious to see what your bench looks like. But uh, yeah, the team looks good apart from Trent, Steele, Ben White, Cody, and Basuma. That's a yeah. So that's a really really solid team. The only thing I would say is that you don't have Trent, which is the would be the concerning thing. Um, so how would you easily see? The thing is, you wouldn't be able to easily get to Trent from any player really. Um, Unless you downgraded them, like, significantly. So, the only way that I can see it would be if you downgraded Rudiger to, like, a 4.0. So, like, a Williams or, or a Livermento. Um, and then you boosted up White or Cody... So how much money would that give you? Rudiger's what, 5.5? So White would take you up to a, a 4.3, 5.3, 5.8. So you'd still need an additional million. So basically you have to sacrifice somebody in midfield or somebody in attack if you want to Trent back. But you do have Jota and Salah as well. Um, so I think you're okay there. But I mean, who knows? I don't think... I don't think Liverpool are keeping a clean sheet this week, personally. Um, and uh, they're not going to keep a clean sheet versus Man City. So if you think Trent's only going to get two clean sheets in the next four, then, yeah, I think that's probably okay. Uh, because I can see... Um, I can see Digne... Um, I can see Digne uh, keeping at least two clean sheets as well. So, yeah. Also, if you do if you do dots like that, it uh, it makes it a a link. Uh, so you probably want to space it out or put dashes instead because it makes it like a link and it makes it really weird. Um, so we got Sanchez, Foster, Trent, Shaw, Ailing, Simicas. I guess that's Oma Bamadeli. Uh, Basuma, Mares, Bruno, Son, Ben Rama, Tony, Ings, and Antonio. Um, yeah, no worries. I can I can just barely read it, but yeah, it is a bit harder to parse. Probably commas are probably better. Um, so let me bring up, let me put that team in the transfer thingy. So who we got? We got Sanchez. I mean Foster. It doesn't really matter. Um, they're the same. Uh, so Shaw, Ailing, Simic has. So the only difference that you have instead of Ailing is uh, Umabama Delhi, who he's going to be 3.9 now. 
Um, you have Basuma and Gilmore are the same, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, you have Fernandez. You have Son. And you have Mares. So Mares. You have Son. You have Antonio, Tony, and the Ings. So this would be Tony. And how much money do you... And you have 2.4 million in the bank. Okay, so is that the same as me? It is. Okay, so whatever I do here is the same as what you would have. And you have two free transfers. So, first of all, you got to get rid of Son because he's injured, in my opinion. Um, and then, me personally... Um, I'm not sure... I, is Mars going to start? I don't really know. I think... See, I think you got to get rid of Tony now, personally, because I don't... I'm not sure if he scores versus Brighton. It's it's a bit weird. Um, and then he's got Wolves away, which is tricky always. And then he's got four bad fixtures in a row. So, I would be tough tempted um, I'd be half tempted to... Oh, but the thing is, you have Simicast, so you can't really get Jota, so... Um, hmm. Well, you probably want a premium forward in, so... If we put Ronaldo in... Um, you could put Triori there. And then if you didn't have Simicast, you could you could bring in Jota. Um, I mean, you could potentially do something. Uh, yeah, you could potentially do something like this. You could potentially do something like that. So you could take you t you could take a minus eight if you wanted to if you really wanted Jota. Um. Otherwise, you could bring in, like, Traore and somebody else uh, in midfield. And then you can have Ronaldo, Fernandez, and Shaw all playing against Newcastle. And then the following... Um, and then the following week, you could trade up Fernandez for Salah. My idea was to get in CR7 and Jota for Ings and Son. You could do that, too. So, if you kept... if you, You're saying if you keep Mares, Um... So if you keep Mares, uh, you had Tony. I guess you can deal with Tony later, to be honest. Um, and you said get rid of Ings. And then you have to get rid of Simicast. So can you do that? So let's see, Ronaldo. Uh, you would then get uh, Jota. Oh yeah, you can, 4.4. Yeah, the only so the only the only issue, um, I think the math doesn't work out as nicely as you'd want. Um, but yeah, you could you could just do Ronaldo and and Jota in for um, and just. Yeah, you'd have to take a hit next week, though. Yeah, so you'd have to take a hit. It would be something along the lines of, like, um... Well, actually, no, I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do it, because... Uh, so, I had the same money that, that you had, right? Um, and I only have 0.4. So, Simicast is he he's selling at 4 million so you still can't even get 0.5 so that's kind of the the problem i would see jangsta with the, with your team so that's that's the real issue um unless you have exactly 0.5 cuz my my values could be obviously a little bit different but um basically get to this position so put in Ronaldo and Jota for Son and Ings and then see if you can take out Simicas and Fernandez for Salah and a 4.0 defender. Um, that's the only 
that's what I would say. If you can do that, then yeah, sure, it probably probably works out nicely. Um, but apart from that, uh, you might have to do something a little bit different. Might have to get rid of Mara's basically. My idea. Oh, we read that one. Um, I was. How's it going? Ink Silakaku worth a minus four? Probably, I would say. Um, is Renato going to start today? I hope so. Um, based on the way Soulshire spoke, he like was like, yeah, Renato's going to play at some point. I, you know, I make the team, da da da, and then he like kind of smirked at the end. When Soulshire does that, he kind of is trying to get away with something. Um, so I think Renato's going to start personally. Yeah, short by point one. Yeah, see, I figured. I figured. Am I keeping Ings? Yes. So I've made my three transfers for those that are just arriving. Um, I brought in Ronaldo for Wilson, Saar for Barnes, and Mount for Son. Son's injured, or looks to be injured. Wilson's injured, and Barnes was underperforming. So we brought in Saar for this few good fixtures, and hopefully he can get us something in these. Um, we got Mason Mountain as well. Um, so that we have Chelsea, uh, what's it, cover, but I like I like him over uh, the likes of Ferran Torres. I think he's more nailed. Um, and actually, his heat map actually surprised me as well. Um, and then Ronaldo, because, you know, it's Ronaldo, isn't it? Um, and we'll have Ings for the next two game weeks. So basically, what we'll be looking at is, um, so next week, we have enough money to go from Fernandez uh, straight to Salah and captain him uh, next week. Um, and then we have uh, the following week we can go Ings to either, uh, you know, the likes of Bamford after we've seen a little bit more from Leeds um, in game week six. Um, and then we could also uh, go to Jimenez. So we would have seen an extra couple of weeks from them as well uh, versus Watford and Brentford. And it's not like we're missing out on the fixtures because they still have fairly good fixtures right the way through to game week 14 so um and then in game week seven we would take out uh Shaw for like a Chelsea defender probably or something like that um no we'll, we'll keep Ings only for um um only until game week six unless he unless he scores versus Chelsea and then he scores versus Everton in which case, why would I get rid of him? If Ings goes and scores versus Chelsea and then scores versus Everton and Jimenez doesn't look good or Bamford doesn't look good or, or both, then why why get rid of him? You know, he's got three returns in three. Ings does have a habit of scoring against tougher opposition. But um, if he blanks in two games in a row, most likely... And if it looks like Wolves are playing better and Bam or, or Leeds are playing better and Bamford and, and Jimenez look really good, then probably we'll get rid of him. But that's for game week six, I think. Also, this Everton at home fixture isn't a, as bad of a you know rating here as it says it is. It's like a FDR rating of three. I'm not so sure of selling Ings, but I want to. Yeah, I mean, a lot of us had you know game weeks one through three. We were keeping Ings and then we were going to get rid of him. But... You know, it's it's one of those ones. I personally think the Chelsea fixture is is bad. The Spurs fixture isn't as bad, but the the real issue is that in these four fixtures, three of them are away games, uh, which isn't great. But the one one the one bright spark that gives me hope is the Everton at home game because I think that could still be points for Ings because Everton's defense, in my opinion, still doesn't look right. Um, so, yeah. Is Martin as out for today's match? He is. Him and Buendia are out, as well as Christian Romero from Spurs and Giovanni Lo Celso. Um, because they went on international duty with, uh, with, uh, Argentina. So, yeah. Now, let's bring up the watch list. Where's our watch list? 
So let's take a look at some of the players uh, that we got going here. So the goalkeepers, I think, are going to stay here because Lloris has got three clean sheets and three. He's been doing quite well. Um, I think Rish is still fine there as well. Um, Region has been ticking along nicely, so he'll stay there. Um, Reese James will stay on the watch list even though he's suspended. Uh, Diaz on the watch list. I mean, yeah, we'll keep him there. Um, Duffy, I'm probably going to take off the watch list just because he's increased in price and I think his position could be under threat. So we'll remove him for now. Uh, Tanganga will remove from the watch list because they brought that uh, that royal guy in. Uh, Mings were Def, I don't know, why do we have him on the watch list? Because he got 15 points, I guess. Uh, but Mings didn't play, and um, and Aston Villa's defense doesn't look as good. Uh, Cancelo's going to stay. Cresswell, we're going to remove from the watch list. Um, he did get an assist uh, and score a goal, but I think West Ham's uh, fixtures are starting to change a little bit. They're starting to go half and half. Um, and... They you gotta rely on attacking returns basically. Uh, Dean, we will keep on the watch list uh, if they don't keep a clean sheet versus Burnley at home. I mean, then it's probably curtains for him. Uh, Son, we've removed from the watch list uh, because he's injured. Four Nows is definitely gonna stay on the watch list. Decore, um, we'll keep him on the watch list uh, for now. Same with Gray, Grealish, Bergwine will probably remove from the watch list. Um, because I think his place is at in jeopardy when Son and Kane are both playing. Uh, but we could always bring him back. Tempting for Lukaku for me, yeah. I mean, like a lot of managers, they're um, they're they're weighing up the opportunity of Lukaku over over Ronaldo because you saved the point five, the the not the point five, the one million, basically. Um, Spurs isn't that difficult of a game, you know. They're gonna Chelsea versus Spurs is basically like a training exercise for them, in my opinion. I think the quality is just too good. I don't think Spurs are as good as what they're showing right now. Um, Man City will be difficult, but then the run afterwards is obviously great, and you're ahead of the curve for Chelsea, so I think it's fine. Um, Mountain we've got on the watch list. We'll be having him in our team, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, Gross will probably remove from the watch list because I think Brighton are starting to become a bit hit or miss. Uh, Deli Ali uh, will remove from the watch list. He looks more of a box-to-box -box midfielder and doesn't really uh, get involved. And Kane's back, so he's not going to be on penalties anymore. Uh, Saar we have in our team, obviously. And Saar's done well. He scored in the first game, but two tough away games. Um... Now back to the uh, home games, two home games and three versus weaker opposition. And Norwich away is a good fixture for him. Um, El Ghazi, I mean, just not really going to go there. He's going to be removed from the watch list. Um, Havertz, we will monitor him. We'll see how he does, um, especially in this game, because he kind of got hooked because of the red card. So a bit unfair on him. Rafinha, we'll keep on the watch list. And Buemo. I mean, three blanks and three. Not really going to go there with Brentford. Their fixtures are running out. Trinko and Traore, definitely on the watch list. Uh, and Leon Bailey will remove from the watch list as well. Jesus will probably keep on there. Calvert-Lewin, Vardy. Um, we'll probably keep Vardy on there as well. Dennis, Richarlison, Bamford, Armstrong, Lukaku, Jimenez, and Kane, I think, are all valid choices to be on the watch list. So we'll keep those there. Because I think all of those players are worth keeping an eye on. Um, anyone from Arsenal on the watch list um, that we can add? I don't think we're going to add anyone from Arsenal. I need to see what they do versus Norwich before we start adding players. Aston Villa, no. Brentford, no. Brighton, no. Burnley, no. Chelsea. Um, I think Christensen is definitely one to watch. Because he could be an easy way into the Chelsea defense. If he's starting to play game in, game out. And Thiago Silva isn't. Uh, and then it's uh, easy to get into that defense. Um, and I would say Alonso probably fits into that category as well. We'll see if he keeps playing. Because Alonso is always a goal threat. Um, if he's playing game in, game out. 
Um, I think that's about it for Chelsea. Uh, Crystal Palace, probably not. Everton, probably not. Uh, Leeds, Leicester, Liverpool. I think Jota definitely goes on the watch list for sure. For Liverpool. Because we're still not sure when Firmino is going to be back. Um, Man City. I would say probably Ferran Torres. Just because I chose not to get him. So he's on the watch list. Um, I would say. Um, De Bruyne and Foden. We'll wait until we actually see them play first. To see what, what we go for there. Um, Scott Carson, if you guys want a goalkeeper, four million. He's gonna probably start this week, so if you want a Man City goalkeeper, you can go for him. Um, Newcastle, probably not. Norwich, Southampton, Spurs, Watford, West Ham, Wolves. I think I have Jimenez on the watch list already. Yeah, we do. Um, what I the, the one I will add will probably be Semedo. We'll probably be adding to the watch list as well. So, oh, and Saw as well. We'll, we'll add him because uh, he hasn't been as good as what uh, FPL managers probably want, but his fixtures look great, so we could go there. So yeah. We'll have to uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that, and we'll have to keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at the at the fixtures for this week. So, who we got? Should I do Ings to Lukaku? I mean. I think it's probably good. If you don't have Ronaldo, I think it, you know using Ings to go to Lukaku makes sense, in my opinion. I think that's fine. Um, as long as you have somebody else in your team that you're going to be able to captain the following week as well, because Lukaku versus Spurs and and City um, probably isn't the best captain shout. You'd probably be captaining Salah in five and six if you have him. I don't want Ronaldo right now. I need to know he, 100% who is going to take pens. Yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. That's why I've kept both Fernandez and Ronaldo. Um, that's why, I mean, when Son was, looks like he was going to be injured, I mean, he made the decision for me, but... Um, so, yeah. Salah captain. I think Lukaku could score against Spurs as well. I mean, yeah, he definitely could. I mean, Lukaku could score against anyone. Chelsea can score against anyone. The thing is with Chelsea is when you see a notification that says, ding, Chelsea 1-0, who's most likely to score? It's probably Lukaku. When you see ding, 1-0 United, it's not necessarily Ronaldo that's going to be the one that scores. So that's where you kind of um, kind of have to play out because United Fernandez could score. Rashford could score when he's back. Sancho could score. Ronaldo could score. Um, you know, Mason Greenwood could score. Um, whereas Chelsea, it's typically going to be like Havertz uh, or whoever else is playing in that front three that isn't Mason. I mean, Mason Mount can score, obviously, but. Um, and then Lukaku. Greenwood is my cover for CR7 as of now. And I think Greenwood is perfectly fine. I think Greenwood is perfectly fine. Greenwood could be the one that scores today. Who knows? <sighs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's perfectly fine. It's just a matter of, will Mason Greenwood be in the team long term? Probably not. But by that time, um, United's fixtures won't be as good, so... Greenwood to Rafinha soon? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think that makes sense, personally. Um, uh, the game week seven, Mark. I think once you've seen a couple of games from Leeds against 
not as good opposition because their first few fixtures have been ba- have been somewhat bad, barring Burnley. But like to bring him in for game week seven, I think is probably um probably okay. You're doing Lukaku, go for it. Give him the armband too. I think that would probably be the best. Um, but let's take a look at the. Excuse me, the yawns are coming in. Now I, I can't see. Got my eyes all watery now. There we go. It, I mean, it seems like it seems like Jose Mourinho is right. If I speak, I am in in big trouble. I go to speak and then I start yawning. Um, so. Salah and Lukaku is a tough choice. I think Lukaku this week is better than Salah personally. Um, let me actually bring up a uh, another window off to the side, just so I can have Twitter available, just in case we get some something wonky um, off to the side. Let's see. As FF Scout as has gone and said just a minus four for me this week, meaning no Jota doubling up on United attack with Greenwood and the big man Ronnie Captain up front. Probably being too clever by guessing that Simicas will start, but rolling the dice. So as has put Simicas in his team. Uh, to start versus Leeds, which is interesting. Um, and he's got Veltman on the bench. I guess he doesn't want to have Veltman and Sanchez. So, I mean, if Simicast doesn't come on as a sub, then it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, he's gone with a minus, minus four. So, I think he got rid of... can't remember who he got rid of, but... He's brought in Ronaldo, and he's captained him. Um, Late Riser says, last time Salah played Leeds on my birthday, he scored a hat-trick. He plays Leeds United again on his birthday. Correlation does not equal causation. Uh, It's merely an amusing tweet. Um, But uh, interesting little stat there as well. Also, Antonio went up to... uh, uh, Went up to 8 million last night as well. So that is interesting. Yeah, we'll monitor that. We'll keep that off to the side. Uh, Let's see. Thoughts on Dennis. Um, I think it's okay. I don't think you can necessarily rely on him fully though. Because I think that apart from Sar, everyone else can kind of be chopped and changed. Like, I think now that Zhao Pedro is back, that could cause competition. Um, but I think he's okay. At least for the time being. I mean, the fixtures look great, so. Um, if Liverpool nick a goal early against Leeds, it could be massive. Yeah, it all depends on who scores first in that game, in my opinion. I mean, Leeds are just going to attack, attack, attack. It's just a matter of can uh, Liverpool um, exploit the space that Leeds will give them. That's the game that I'm probably worried about the most, um, based on my team, obviously. I mean, I would rather just a a 1-1 and Trent like gets an assist or something in that, and like it's Mane who scores or something. That would be my ideal outcome of the game. Um, so, yeah. But I think Lukaku has a higher chance of a return. Yeah, I mean... Lukaku definitely does. He's at home as well. Remember, home home crowds are playing a big part as well. Taking a minus four this week. I have uh, D Sark uh, 516 or D Sark car 516, if I forgot that right. Um, I took out Wilson, who's injured for this week. Son, who looks like he's injured for this week. And Barnes, who just didn't get anything. Um, for Ronaldo, Ishmael Asar, and uh, Mason Mount. And we're going to probably bring in Salah next week for Fernandez, almost certainly. Salah captain confirmed. I was is happy. 
They defended well last year, I remember, home against Steer. Um, yeah, I think I think Aston Villa with no Martinez makes them a lot worse. Um, so, yeah. Good luck, and to you as well. Um, but, yeah, so the fixtures we got, we got Crystal Palace versus, um, versus Spurs off the bat here. That's the early kickoff. So, any early team news might come from that. Um, don't really expect much. I mean, this is just going to be a Kane, Kane viewing party, to be honest, and to see how well Crystal Palace do, personally. Um, not really too much there. Then we got, what's that, six fixtures playing in, in, at one go. Um, so it's pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, all those fixtures, there's going to be notifications going off probably all the time. Um, and my partner with FF Scout. Glad you mentioned that. Let's talk about them. So yeah, we are an affiliate partner of Fantasy Football Scout. So during the preseason, uh, we can give you a 20% off your uh, membership. Now, the membership isn't um, isn't 20% off at the moment because it is during the season. At least I don't think they've extended the offer. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a cool little partnership. I like Fantasy Football Scout. I've been using it for um, well over a year now as well. Um, it's got a lot of great tools. So yeah, link in the about section if you haven't got it already. Make sure to do it. Um, and if you use the link in the about section, it helps us, which also helps you as well. So yeah, I think it's great, even with or without the discount. I think it's fine. And what you can always do is you can always cut your membership short once the season's over and then reapply it so that you get the discount the reoccurring discount in the preseason so yeah um it's fantastic it's gonna help elevate your fpl game and ronaldo oh wrong screen and ronaldo approves of it as well <laughs> He definitely likes Fantasy Football Scout as well because it's going to have all the OptiStats tables that's going to tell you that he's going to be doing bits. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the six games at uh, 3 o'clock kickoffs for the UK. Arsenal-Norwich, that's going to be a, a that could be a relegation fight there, to be honest. Um, Arsenal need to win. They have to win. Um I'm not going to be watching that game person. I'm going to be watching United versus Newcastle. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm actually curious to see what the... Um, so, certain um, depending on where you are in the, in the world, um, some news broadcasters, um, or, or not news broadcasters, but the, the, the game broadcasters will have a, what's called like a... a a goal rush type of situation. Um, so like the zone as an example, um, in Canada here, they have, uh, they'll have one, one game, which is like the main game of the week. And I, I would assume it's going to be Leicester versus Man City just cause it's two difficult oppositions going against each other, but they might have Man United versus Newcastle because of the whole Ronaldo thing. Um, as the main game, and then what they do is they when when some when there's like a real big chance or like a penalty or, or something controversial, whatever, they cut to the different games so that you can, you can get bits and bobs as you're watching the main game that you're looking at, and they do it during downtime. So let's say like you're watching United Newcastle and it goes up for a throw-in, and they'll be like, hold on, we got to cut to Vicarage Road where Watford have scored and Sars gone in and scored. You know, that would be great if that happened. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see kind of which game they choose as the main one. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to, it'll be, um, uh, Leicester versus Man City, but would hope that it's going to be Man United versus Newcastle. I mean, it's Ronaldo for goodness sake. This weekend is all about Ronaldo as Dark Sarkar has said. What's my top four prediction? I think it, it's Chelsea win the league, City, United, Liverpool, but I think it's close. Um, I think if if Chelsea win the league with let's say 90 points, I think City's City, United, and Liverpool are no more than five to seven points from fourth to first. I don't think it's going to be very much in it at all. If Liverpool keeps fit, if United actually perform, 
if Chelsea perform, if City perform, and there's no like major, major injuries across any four of them, it's going to be within five to seven points between fourth to, to first. But then the gap between fourth and fifth is going to be like 10, 15 points at least, I think. Somewhere around there. Um, Brentford versus Brighton. This could be a very interesting game. If Brighton go and show their... maintain their unbeaten status... That would be very interesting. Hoping for a Brighton clean sheet in that one, because that would be a double clean sheet for us. Um, assuming Veltman plays, obviously. Because um, we know Sanchez is going to play, almost certainly. Uh, so hoping for a double clean sheet. So how many players do we have? So we have none in the first game. I'm going to make a note of this. Let me change the... Uh, so I have none. Uh, I have none in the Arsenal-Norwich game. I have two in the Brighton-Brentford game. Leicester versus Man City. That could be an interesting game, too. I wouldn't mind watching that as well. Um, since they play at the same time as United do, I'm going to watch the United game, almost certainly. Um, but I have no players in that game. United and Newcastle, we have technically... We have three plus captain um, in that one. Southampton, West Ham. That could be interesting. Both teams could definitely score in that. Um, so... Uh, I have two in that with Ben Rama and Antonio. Um, Watford Wolves. Uh, we have Sar going in that one, so we have one. And then Chelsea Aston Villa, we have one as well. Oh, no, we have two. Sorry. We have, almost forgot about things. So we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have ten players on the first day. Plus our captain. Um, we have none on the Monday. And then we have just the one... Uh, just the one on the Sunday. So yeah, Sunday is going to be terrible. So yeah, Sunday is going to be terrible. That's the one. I'm not <laughs> I'm not looking forward to watching Salah and Jota line up versus Leeds as they open up. And yeah, that, that, that could be bad. But who knows? We might get lucky. Um, I hope Ronaldo can survive under Ollie tactics. Well... There were stats that they showed on Black Box where basically uh, when Cavani was playing, they utilized uh, a lot more crosses. Now, Cavani didn't have very many chances still, but um, he was uh, he was still getting chances, though. He still had a couple of really good chances a game. So if you're Ronaldo, you probably want a little bit more than that. Um but United with Varane might play a little bit higher up. If they go to one holding midfielder, um, then it could change things drastically. What I would be interested to see, and I think today's game potentially is a perfect, um, a perfect uh, way to kind of experiment it. Um, let me see if I can um, bring it up on the screen here. I'm just going to refresh le twitter uh Late risers gone from Kane and Ings to CR7 and DCL. FF Scout Mark is rolling a transfer and he's got Lukaku captained, ready to go. Um... Let's see. Um, apparently, from a lot of sources, it's saying that Ronaldo's definitely starting. So, apparently, and he's also on penalty duty. So, apparently, this is a very trusted source. So. 
I mean, I was going to captain Ronaldo regardless. Like, how can I not captain Ronaldo on his second debut for United? Like, come on. As a United fan, it's ridiculous. Anyway, what was I doing? All right, I was bringing up the tactics board. Uh, let me remove that. Remove that. Let me see if I can get this to work. There we go. So we've got our tactics board. So the way United currently play at the moment is the following. I'm just going to just disregard the, the numbers at the moment. Um, so it's uh, David De Gea in goal. Uh, Shaw at left back. Bambasaka at right back. Uh, Baran, uh, Maguire, uh, this is usually Fred, this is usually McTominay, uh, when he's fully fit, uh, Rashford will play there, uh, Bruno will play here, uh, Sancho will play here, and Ronaldo will play here, right? This is what they'll probably play in most games. And the reason why we were playing this this Fred and McTominay pivot here is because the the center backs were weak. So we had instead of Varane last season, it was um, uh, Lindelof, who both him and Maguire are particularly quick. They can't get across the ground as quickly as the likes of a Varane. So, in my opinion, I think the fact that you've br you brought in Varane allows you to change the formation. So, that you shift to, to this, which is a, uh, would be a 3-4-3, three, three, which allows you to have two free number eights. Now, that means that Bruno will have to be a little bit more cognizant defensively in some cases, but it allows you to... Um, recycle the ball a lot quicker. Bruno can still make run, runs in behind and, and get in alongside uh, Ronaldo, as can this number eight. I mean, plenty of times we saw for Man City. This was this was David Silva, uh, and this is De Bruyne. And you would have situations where they have Aguero in this position. You would often see David Silva ghosting in this half space. De Bruyne ghosting in this half space as well. Um, with their wide players out on the width. Um, and then they would just have Fernandinho or Rodri. The second the ball is is freed up to somebody and they the ball tries to break, break out. They just cut it out immediately. They would have basically a, a, a danger zone of like here. Where basically if any opposition member got it, chop them down basically. Just take them down. Because you're less likely to get a yellow card taking somebody down in this area versus taking somebody down in this area. The closer you are to your own goal, the more likely you are to get a card. So if you stop the counterattack off in right, right, right away, you, you're more likely to get away with it. Um, so... Um, also, how ridiculous of a team would this be, by the way, with De Bruyne, David Silva, Ronaldo, Rashford, and Sancho? Be crazy. Um, so what I think they should do here is I think you have uh, you put Bruno here because Bruno can play there and is done for Portugal. Uh, you can have Pogba here. He's more box to box. He's going to be a lot more defensively cognizant uh, than Bruno will. And then in this position, um, um, you can put. You could put Van der Beek. Now, people will say, oh, that's a FIFA team. You know, you can't really l rely on stuff defensively. Well, the thing is, you... I mean, you, you you can. You can rely on this defensively, in a sense. Because what you'll have is... Um, what United will go against in most cases. Let's say this is just, you know, some random opposition. They'll be sitting in their box. Two banks of four... Something like this. They'll probably pack out the midfield. They'll have one of their forwards or whatever pack out the midfield. They'll be putting a boatload of guys in the box. 
and they'll probably have their one striker like here and they'll really like try to make things terrible if you have Rashford holding the width with Shaw on one side Sancho on this side looking to dribble with wan coming in and around the outside um, you have Bruno and Pogba trying to pull the strings in these half spaces Ronaldo in the center of the box van der Beek here the center backs really wide um, uh, or wide enough um, and then De Gea can play quite far out and basically De Gea is preventing anything in this space so like a type of long ball uh, Varane has the pace to get back and anytime the ball goes into this position here um, and an opposition member has it so if like let's say this number 11 uh, gets the ball like number like they kind of swarm around Ronaldo uh, Ronaldo can't get the shot off and he gets dispossessed and they play it to this guy Van der Beek is intelligent enough to immediately to cut that out Fernandinho is not ridiculously fast Roger is not ridiculously fast Jorginho is not ridiculously fast Henderson's not ridiculously fast they're just really smart and Carrick played that role as well and what it also does for when building out from the back in particular balls with De Gea you have a uh, let's say it's from a goal kick position here um, you'll probably see something along the lines of this um, in terms of positioning something like that to spread to spread the play so if the ball is played to uh, Varane, you'll probably have their strikers probably trying to to press um, to try to press up and cause problems and probably cut passing lanes to likes of Bruno and whatnot. And then what can happen is Wambasaka can come inside. Van der Beek can always get the better of, of their forward and basically the ball can be recycled really really quickly because Van der Beek is very good at taking the ball so wan plays it inside one time Van der Beek is very good at taking the ball and recycling it basically instantly he can then play this pass um, into Bruno who can then have all this space in behind if they if they press up high Fernando's not opposed to making this run. Sancho's not opposed to making this run if it's on this side. Rashford's not opposed to making this run as well. Pogba can come across and provide support. Bruno can drop into this space as well. There's, it's, it's really, really interesting. Um, it's, it's really, really interesting to to see how Van der Beek could play because he'd basically be like Carrick. So Carrick wasn't ridiculously quick in any way, shape, or form, but he was just smart and he released the ball quickly. And if you look at a lot of the goals, if you go back and watch all of Ronaldo's goals for United, a lot of it stemmed from Scholes or Carrick getting the ball, getting it one touch, instantly playing it. Like a, a raking ball or like a really good pass into one of the front three and Rooney's in and he plays in Ronaldo and it's a goal. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of insight, a little tactical insight there. Um, and we might do, uh, for the tactics talk, uh, United versus Newcastle. So, um, thanks for sharing that. I'm a United fan as well. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, a lot of accounts are saying, uh, uh, that Ronaldo's, uh, going to, uh, going to start. So, uh, yeah, this, this account is, uh, trusted apparently, and a few people are retweeting it as well. Um, so also Ronaldo's 27.4% ownership, which is insane. Um, so yeah. 
free Donnie Lowe. I think that's the only position he gets in is number six, like playing as a single pivot. If he can control that position and make it his own, he could be in there for forever because Fred um, can't do that role because he doesn't know how to pass or control the ball correctly most times. Uh, McTominay takes a bit too long um, and uh, is better actually as more of a box-to-box player, in my opinion. Um, and Matic is just can't get across the ground and can't play more than a, one game a week. 11 minutes till the deadline uh, would be four minutes now. Um, mind you, that's probably how long I was talking on the tactics board. Apologies for that. With TA and Shaw fixed in my back three, among these will you pick as the third, or who among these will you pick as the third defender? Ailing, Omobamadeli, and Simicas. Uh... Simicast and hope the plays, maybe. Um, yeah, I put Simicast in and hope he plays. <laughs> Dad, is that you? Um, don't think so. Uh, nine minutes left, please help. Um, yeah, Simicast. Um, over Ailing and Omar Deli and just hope that he plays. That's just that would be my answer. Um, Imagine a Varane and Eric Bailly backline, both with great recovery pace. Yeah, but you don't necessarily need both defenders to be super, super quick. Um, Varane can just do that. Um, and although Maguire is not necessarily quick, he is smart in most cases. Maguire is just very bad at when def- like he has the 1v1 versus like a tricky like wide attacker. Um, where if you have Varane there to just cover that, then it's fine. Everyone talking about CR7 when the Prem has CK7. I don't know who CK7 is. Um, yeah, I don't know who that is, personally. Unless I'm missing out on an abbreviation there that I'm just not aware of. Um, the day he took on Liverpool with a hazardous, uh he became Cristiano... Oh, you're talking about Angolo Conte. I mean, Conte is ridiculous too. Like Conte would obviously fit United's team perfectly. Just put him alongside Pogba and then let him go. That's the ideal. Because I think that's what United sees as what they want as their other player in the pivot. They want one player that can play in a in a pivot of two sixes. Um, which is basically just a six and eight and a ten, really, in a four two three one. But what I want to see is Bruno drops a little back a little bit further, becomes much more cons- much more efficient with his creativity, still makes runs into the box, but also makes as much runs into the box as Pogba does, and they share that workload equally. They still have to work hard as box to box midfielders, and then you have someone like Van der Beek who keeps it simple, stays back, plays conservative, just reads the game well, basically. Mount over Gray and Torres, yeah, actually. I, I like Mount over Gray and Torres, personally. Um, I think Mount's more nailed. Um, and he plays in the team that I think is going to win the league. So He's also on set pieces, too, so which is nice. Uh, we have around 30 seconds till the deadline, so make sure you have your teams all set and ready to go. I'm going to refresh here just in case. Make sure I got everything in order. So I got Sanchez and Goal, Veltman, Trent Shaw, Mason Mount, Ben Rama, Saar, Fernandez, Ings, Antonio, Vice Captain, and Ronaldo, Captain, with Gilmore, Simicast, and Ailing on the bench. I think I'm good to go. We got 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. And that should be the deadline. That should be the deadline. Hope you all got your transfers and stuff in. Is it going to break the website? Not yet. Not yet. Soon enough, it'll break. It will break soon enough. But, um, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, this game week four is as good as it looks on paper. Uh, Ronaldo making his return back to Old Trafford is interesting. Lukaku has a great fixture versus a Martinez-less uh, Aston Villa. 
So yeah, should be uh, should be very interesting. So let's talk about one more time just about fantasy football scout before we sign off here. So fantasy football scout, fantastic tool. If you haven't done so already, use the link down in the description. Uh, I think it's twenty four ninety nine uh, in British pounds for the whole season. You can always cancel it once the season's over so you can get the, uh, the, the preseason discount, which gives you 20% off for the whole season. It's a fantastic tool. The link's also in the chat as well. Um, and uh, yeah, fantastic tool. It's gonna help elevate your FPL game and it is Ronaldo approved as well. So let's move over to the big screen. That is gonna do it for the Game Week 4 deadline. If you haven't done so already, Make sure to follow us here on Twitch. If you're watching this over on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, follow, share, like, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we will be back for the Game Week 5 preview uh, on Monday uh, after the Everton versus Burnley game. So until then, take care.